My name is Deron Black. I'm a candidate for the 23rd District. I've also lived in the district all of my life. The only time that I was out of the district was when I was in the military. And I had the opportunity to live coast to coast and to observe a lot of things. And one of the things that I can say about myself and my connection to the district is that I'm not one of the people or one of the individuals who was very successful in his uh, life growing up in that district. Uh, the school system failed me. The criminal justice system didn't do anything for me. And it was actually my religion that actually got, my, that got me together and my head on straight. So one of the things that I would say about myself is that I've shed blood in that district. I've had men and women, close friends of mine and family members die in that district. And like I said, I was in the school system and guess what, that school system didn't do anything for me. So my connection to that district is real and the issues in that district is real. I don't have a lot of the, the uh, political background that a lot of people have when they run for these uh, type of positions. But one of the things that I do have is the skill and the will to actually fight for you and to be your voice in Jefferson City. Thank you. Now, one of the things that I've heard up to this point is, you know, of course, the jobs. And jobs should be on the, the mouth of, you know, everybody, especially in politics, but it doesn't seem that it is. Uh, just not any job should be considered. It should be uh, meaningful jobs, jobs that are gonna pay decent wages. And one of the things that, you know, through my life experiences, uh, I thought that could be or is a very uh, critical pillar in our community and that's small business ownership. Uh, uh, Randy and Eric both said that they are small business owners and you're a small business owner too. Be a small business owner too. So if we can focus on having more small business owners in the 23rd district, I think that will go a long way in job creation because not only will you be creating jobs in the 23rd district by empowering small business owners, but you will be empowering the people who actually work for those small business owners. I was inspired, I would uh, say, by uh, the work that I did when I was younger for a uh, guy who worked next door as a mechanic to my aunt. My basketball would bounce over his fence and he would make me grab a tool uh, for, you know, not keeping my basketball, I keep a 5 8 or a 9 16 wrench or something like that. It, it inspired me because of the simple fact that I knew that Buster woke up every morning and that he was in charge of his own paycheck. So when you have more men like that or more individuals in our community who, are, who take on the responsibility of, of being their own employers and take the, uh, the initiative to hire individuals from that community, those jobs are meaningful and those small business owners are meaningful and that, I think that goes a long way with uh, job creation. In my opinion, the, uh, the local control is a, a no-brainer. Um, I was down in Jefferson City one time uh, through this uh, campaign, and I actually saw a uh, representative arguing with, a, uh, with another representative about uh, the prevailing wage law. And of course, if you understand anything about Missouri politics and you understand how the Republicans control the, the, uh, the legislative branch, then you really understand how, uh, how concerned uh, certain individuals are uh, about urban areas. But anyway, uh, my experience in school, when I acted up in school, the teacher actually whooped my butt, you know, Miss Baker. I was at the NAACP meeting probably a couple months ago and I, I shared that with members there. Miss Baker whooped my butt, I went home, my mother whooped my butt, then my grandmother whooped my butt, and the, also the next door neighbor who I tossed papers for, she would have whooped my butt because she knows the history of my mother and my, uh, my grandmother, so she had sympathy on me that time. And she told me that she would be the first one to whoop my butt the next time I acted up in school. And i share that story again because it showed accountability on all levels. Uh, the teacher was not only uh, willing to correct me, you know, as far as the school goes, you know, as far as sending me to ISS, OSS, anything like that. No, she cared even more than that 
to whoop my butt and tell my parents that she whooped my butt, you know? So when you have that level of accountability in the schools and that level of accountability in the neighborhoods, then the school systems will work. So local control is a no-brainer. But if we're not doing the things to empower the families and make the families uh, uh, more involved in the education of the children, then, then we're really not going anywhere. And I say that because if you look at the issue of like the Head Start program being eliminated from the from the state budget, now you have a situation where a kid is uh, not being able to take advantage of the Head Start program and get a, 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 a jump on his education. And now the mother, she has to question or she has to make a decision about where is her child going to go when she has to go to work. So if you continue to have situations like that where a, a, a mother or, or, or individual has to make a decision about where their kid will be will, will stay at during the day while they go to work, then, then you're not going to get anywhere in the school system in regards of what type of accreditation you may have or, 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 or what type of superintendent or, 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 or board members you may have. So empowering the family and empowering the community organizations is, a, is my opinion of how you fix the school. You know what? That's an excellent question. I like that question. Um, and it's a question I think I just got through answering. Uh, well, maybe if not earlier today, but I have answered that question um, uh, throughout this campaign. And one of the things that I was doing before I decided to run was uh, make sure I took care of my family first then make sure I took care of my community second. And um, then whatever else, you know, I guess the, the trickle down effect, you know, uh, as far as my energies and, and my time. Uh, but through this campaign, I realized something about myself and I realized something about my city and about my state and my country. And the thing that I realized is that we need more individuals like myself. Um, of course, I'm black, uh, I'm a male, and I am running for office in that district. And uh, I say that because when I look at that district and when I look at the condition of that district, one of the biggest issues that we have in that district is the lack of a presence of African-American black males who want to be responsible and who want to be accountable on, uh, on all levels of, of society. And I am one of those individual, individuals who want to be accountable on all levels of society. I want to be accountable to my family. I want to be accountable to my, my city, my neighborhood, and the state, and the country. And this, uh, so this, less, this uh, race uh, doesn't necessarily um, end uh, that, uh, that role that I will take on in the future, you know, in regards to if I win or lose. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited, excited about, you know, this race. And I'm even more excited about, you know, even if I lose, you know, because I'm not the most politically correct person. And sometimes I don't like being politically correct because I think that when you're always politically correct, then people have the tendency to say things or they can try to slide things in that they wouldn't necessarily slide in or even attempt if they knew, if they knew that this person wasn't going to take anything like that. So with that being said, uh, my career as a uh, uh, social advocate has now begun. I'm a believer in uh, universal principles, so, you know, trying to say that you know, there's two separate aisles, you know, keep one side on one side and the other side on the other side is, in my opinion, uh, very ridiculous. And with that, with that being said, you know, uh, I heard a, uh, somebody uh, gave me a good quote from uh, William Clay Lacey. It was that there's no permanent enemies or no permanent friends. There's only permanent interests. So I believe uh, I believe in that statement, and I believe in sticking to it. Well, I definitely feel uh, heartbroken. Uh, just kind of touch on what Brandon was talking about earlier. We, when we look in this room, we are basically preaching to the choir. Uh, I'm pretty sure the majority of the people in this room have a, uh, a political knowledge that's far superior, probably even than mine. You know, so so having you here is good, but unless we find ways to fill the seats with the people who are actually being disenfranchised, the people who are actually speaking about, and the people who we are actually talking about lives and affecting their lives, unless we get them in this room and have them a part of the conversation, then we are really are spinning our wheels. So thank you.